Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Crypto Corner. Today we will be looking at the markets as usual. We're going to talk about Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, what is currently happening with the price and everything. Also, I will be answering questions. I will be talking about the top hardware wallets. I will be uh, giving you my opinion on which is the best hardware wallet, the safest and everything. Also, I will be answering other questions such as uh, crypto and tax related questions and also some of the altcoins that I'm currently trading. So this is what we've got for you today let's get started first we're going to look at the markets of course okay so at first glance what we see is a lot of green on the markets today we are doing a recovery if you noticed in the last couple of days we went through a minor correction and um, and we are recovering very well today we are at 31,000 and a half for Bitcoin uh, 1,000 for Ethereum we will finally manage to hit the 1k for Ethereum it was quite a bull run over the last couple of days and um, for quite some time it was struggling to actually cross that 1,000 mark that's done now uh, we'll see if we're gonna go through a correction uh, we've done eight percent almost nine percent over the last 24 hours um, whether this will hold or are we going to see a lot of selling pressure right now that we are above the 1000 I actually feel that many people are uh, wanting to hold at this point because uh, we've seen that the bull run of Bitcoin did not provide uh, decent corrections did not provide any uh, strong retracement to a lower uh, support levels and many people who are selling Bitcoin in the hope that they will be buying it back uh, when there is a correction got disappointed even I uh, sold some a little bit of Bitcoin at around 26 28 thousand and at 30,000 as well thinking this is you know a, a very strong um, resistance level a psychological resistance so once we we touch that level we are due to correct but uh, we didn't really I mean luckily we corrected after we hit the 34,000 and we did quite a correction on Bitcoin in fact from 34,700 we went all the way to 727,696 so around that price this is on coinbase here so luckily i managed to accumulate some of that bitcoin back uh, that i was selling earlier but um, at this point we can't actually expect deep corrections and uh, i said it in my previous videos as well there is a lot of institutional money and we're talking in the millions that are coming into this space right now so they don't actually allow the price to really correct down what we saw in 2017 and previous bull runs typically uh, was a lot of and i i hope you saw my video that i did uh, a week ago or at the end of of december actually i did my last video of last year was about the bitcoin's all-time highs and the bull runs and we saw that um, just before we hit an or just after we hit another all-time high we usually correct it by 30 40 sometimes even more percent um, this time we corrected 16 11 you know these kind of percentages not very much uh, if we actually check what we correct this is for the first time that we are correcting now kind of a proper correction we did 20 percent uh, just over 20% correction this is now the biggest correction we've had over the last six months or around there um, previously we've had let's see what was this correction here that was a correction of 8% not much that's not even a correction that was that's pretty much just a consolidation so for the first time now in Bitcoin, we are seeing a 20% correction uh, with Ethereum is a similar story. Let me just find Ethereum's chart and have a look at its corrections. So this is currently the bull run of Ethereum. And as you see, we don't really have much uh, of a correction on Ethereum as well. Uh, this here is the same what Bitcoin did. I mean, of course, when Bitcoin drops, it takes pretty much the whole market with it so 24 percent correction for ethereum just after it hit 1169 makes perfect sense uh, but 
I don't expect a deeper correction on Ethereum right now. And many people don't expect it because they saw what Bitcoin did and they know that uh, we're in a different bull run this time than what it happened before. And uh, that's why I don't really expect too much of a selling pressure. If you look at the red candles, yes, we had a lot of red here, red volume. That's a lot of selling pressure, but that's it. Since then, we haven't actually seen any other huge red candles uh, here a little bit, but not nearly as big as these red candles here. So the selling volume is reducing, which means we keep going up or at least consolidating instead of going up. This is why at this point, I hope you managed to scoop some of uh, whatever you were buying or you were selling previously, whether it be Bitcoin or Ethereum or other coins during this uh, drop over the last couple of days. Uh, when was it? It was uh, two days ago. No, yesterday. Oh, yes, yesterday. I was I was actually uh, recording another video. And just before I started recording, I placed a few buy orders. As I finished recording the video, they had been filled and I was really happy. Uh, there were a few buy orders that didn't get filled up because I was probably <laughs> hoping for a much uh, lower drop. Nevertheless, anyway, um, so this is what's happening right now. We are in a different bull run this time than uh, what we've seen previously. Um, another thing right now that we are seeing is after Bitcoin and Ethereum did their strong pumps, Ethereum actually really launched the out season. I think we are now, I, I, we've already entered the next out season. Um, Bitcoin's dominance is dropping. This is also good news. And uh, it is now at 67.9%. If you remember in my previous video, we were at 71% and I was really hoping that we will drop below the 70% and uh, we still need to drop more. We have to go to around 62, 63% and then it will be great for the outs because Bitcoin's dominance weakening means money going into altcoins you know, people diversifying and everything. So um, this is what I'm expecting right now. I feel that the Bitcoin dominance will keep dropping. I've already seen a lot of people that I'm following on Twitter and friends of mine who are traders and everything, uh, you know, already moving, allocating capital from Bitcoin into some outs. And um, and the Ethereum uh, pump to 1000 was really kind of the, the boost that the outs needed. Typically, there is uh, at least a Ethereum or or sometimes it's Dodge <laughs> and some other outs are the ones that are really leading the out season. They are kind of booming really uh, quickly, really fast and um, and are kind of launching the out season. So I think this time Ethereum did that. Um, we're going to see uh, a lot of uh, high gains now in the outs as Bitcoin is consolidating because I feel that around 31, 32 up to 34,000 is um, a consolidation time for Bitcoin. Right now it's seeing a little bit of a, um, let me go back to the chart again, a little bit of a resistance and it's going to struggle for a period of time before it can go for the next leg up. And it's this side movement here right now. If we manage to keep this and we keep going sideways and consolidate for a period of time, that would be really good for the outs. It's been very short right now. It's only been a day. It's not even a side movement. We are still on the daily chart. We are still in have in a correction time. We're just, you know, dropping from the all time high that we printed. So, um, We'll, we'll see how this plays out. Uh, I mean, we can even drop a bit lower and a bit lower. That would also be completely normal and I would expect that to happen. But I feel that right now we have a strong support around the 30,000. As we dropped to 27,000, as you see, it's literally just a week. Uh, let me just delete this so that we can see this better. So this here, this, this drop that happened, this is just a week. It's not even a candle, meaning that it didn't stay for even just one day. So um, very brief correction. It's not, it's not really a correction. So if we start correcting properly now and we start going down, I feel that by this point here, 29, 30,000, this is where we're going to be stopped out. It is a strong support. The attempt to go below the 30,000 was very short lived. And uh, I just don't see it happening right now. Um, 
Of course, if it, there's always a possibility of this to happen, uh, I'm not saying that it's impossible, that it's definitely not happening, but um, it's less and less possible as time goes by. Because in the worst case scenario right now would be to make an ABC correction. You know, like this is the A, B, C correction. And if we do that, and I'm doing it very roughly right now, we can go down all the way to 26, 25K. But, um, the likelihood of that right now at this point is um, not very high. So I don't really expect this to happen. Now in the news, uh, it, we're talking about uh, the bullish set setup of Bitcoin sending Ethereum to $2,000. According to some analysts, no surprise there. I'm also expecting that, uh, I mean, Ethereum has already outperformed Bitcoin big time uh, in uh, 2020 and it will probably do the same in 2021 uh, there is still more development coming on ethereum uh, ethereum 2.0 is still rolling out and all the features and everything uh, if they manage to do it right without too many hiccups we are definitely going to see yet another strong year for ethereum and possibly uh, better than bitcoin just as well uh, ethereum last year did 400 percent bitcoin did 320 percent or around these kind, kind of figures so uh, definitely ethereum is a strong contender to to have another big year um, also in the news, JP Morgan predicts Bitcoin price could rise over $146,000 in the long term. This is not really news. In my previous video, which I dedicated to the boldest and biggest and craziest Bitcoin price predictions, uh, there were much higher amounts quoted than this one. Also in the news now, there is a rumor about uh, possibly Tron being the next coin taken to courts, uh, you know, um, just following the lawsuit with XRP that uh, the SEC in America is trying to brand it as a security. Now there, there are rumors that Tron is the next one. Uh, Justin Sun, the founder of Tron, has denied these rumors. So we'll see uh, what's happening here. And um, not very good for Tron holders, though, because this kind of fad news are catalysts for the prices to start uh, dumping and uh, crashing and stuff like that. Um, I'm, I'm not really holding Tron, so I, I'm impartial here. Uh, but we saw what happened with XRP and uh, also Stellar also uh, suffered a huge blow because Stellar and XRP are very similar. They're both founded by pretty much the same people and uh, they have similarities also in, in the way they operate and everything. So. Uh, as people started dumping XRP, they also dumped Stellar. And in fact, I saw, I don't have it ha handy right now, but I saw a screenshot from Grayscale, you know, the biggest Bitcoin trust fund. They were dumping uh, 90 million XRP coins and uh, pretty much the same amount in, uh, in um, Stellar at the same time when the news broke out about this court case. So. Yeah, uh, be careful. If you're holding Tron, keep an eye on the news and uh, and keep informed because if you see something like that happening, you can it can devalue so much very, very quickly because they did have an ICO in 2017. And in fact, when I go into the questions now, uh, one of the questions is about this. So we're going to uh, talk about this more. Now, uh, actually, let's go into the questions because it is that time now. Let's go into my segment of Ask Me Anything. I've selected quite a few questions today uh, from people. And um, let's start with, is this the first one? Yes, this is the first one. Okay, so here we have a question about um, taxes. House call on YouTube is saying uh, I am at loss when it comes to tax portion of all of this. When it comes to eventually selling my crypto, I hold XRP, Tezos, AGA and a few others. How do you begin to calculate the cost basis? For example, if you've bought at different times, at different prices and even moved some crypto from one exchange to the other, then sold some amount, where do you start? Say I bought 100 XRP at 18 cents, then 100 more at 23 cents and then moved uh, 100 over from one exchange to another, then sold 50 of them to Binance, whatever, whatever. So how do you calculate that? Right. Um, I'm not really uh, an expert when it comes to taxation and stuff like that. Also, bear in mind, I am in 
uh, Europe and many people, um, I suppose you might be in America or something because in America you have this problem where every transaction you make on the exchange is taxable. So every time you sell is taxable. Um, even if you are selling between different cryptocurrencies, I mean, pretty much every exchange order that you make and it's filled is taxable. That's not really the case with us in Europe. Um, I'm actually taxable when I move into fiat. So if I'm exchanging Bitcoin for USD Tether, that's not fiat. And that's what I'm doing on most of the exchanges. Um, I'm exchanging it for USD Tether, or I'm exchanging it for Ethereum or, you know, a different coin. And I'm not moving into fiat. So I'm not actually cashing out. You know, it's the same thing. If you are selling a house, you're cashing out and a house is an asset. So you're paying your tax. Uh, crypto in most countries is an asset. You know, in some countries is a currency, but mostly it's not. So, and you have to find out whether it's a currency in your country or whether it's an asset or, you know, what it is. Um, in some countries, it's an equity as well. Anyway, so you need to, uh, if you're in the States, then what you should do probably is uh, find a service that is automating these things for you. Let me go into, I mean, I can't remember on top of my head the name of this service, but it could be this one here that I'm that you're seeing on the screen. I, I remember when I was on one of the uh, conferences uh, back in the day, was it 2017 or 18? Maybe it was in 2018 when I was in Malta in the blockchain conference. Um, I met these guys and uh, they had this service where everything is automated. Basically, you just take your history, your trading history, you download it from the exchange, you send it into their software and all of your taxes and everything starts being calculated automatically. And it could be this here token tax because I remember on top of my head that the name was having token, but I'm not uh, entirely certain. So it's up to you to check it, but it seems like this could be the service because it is, uh, as we see here, it's been featured on all of these uh, networks and, uh, you know, including Forbes and Bloomberg and the blog and stuff like that. So uh, it looks like this is uh, quite a legit service and it, it, it could be the service that I'm talking about at the time we had, uh, they were integrated with Coinbase, Bittrex and uh, Huobi and maybe a couple of other services. But right now I'm seeing here quite a lot of different exchanges that are being listed. So you can upload your data from any of these exchanges or all of them into your account and it should cal calculate everything on, you know, automatically for you. So this is probably your best way to do it, but you should just do a, a search and see what other um, services are there because there will be some other services available and um, it really depends on where you are based. If you're in the US, if, if you're in the UK and some of the other um, countries where Bitcoin is quite popular, then you would have competition, you would have uh, different services to you to choose from. If you are in, um, in a, you know, in countries where crypto is not yet uh, very popular and, and the government and, uh, you know, authorities are not completely um, switched on, then you might not actually have this type of services. But some of these services might work internationally. So it is um, really up to you to do your own research. But uh, this is what I can suggest. Uh, it's it's just, uh, just find a service and uh, or you can even just go to an accountant and speak to an accountant and see if they want to do they can give you an, another tip or something like that but i don't file my taxes myself i use an accountant and that's his job you know that's what my accountant's uh, accountant has to do i don't really bother with that so um unfortunately i'm not really an authority uh on, on tax here to, to be talking about it um Tony Aremo is asking me what are my, what is my what are my coins or what is my coin of choice? Well, in any case, I don't really have a coin of choice for the whole year. Uh, I I trade different coins and uh, I hold a few of them long term, and then everything else is short term. So I hold, of course, Bitcoin ninety percent of my portfolio, Ethereum, oh, man, Bitcoin eighty percent of my portfolio, Ethereum, another. 
15% of my portfolio and the rest is uh, you know random coins that I change all the time so I have some link now and link it looks like it's becoming another longer term hold but not long term just longer term meaning maybe I will hold it for another year or something but as soon as I see a huge pump I would sell I mean if link pumps by a hundred percent in in uh, a couple of days or something I will be selling it and then I will be accumulating again Tezos is another one that I'm holding longer term not long term longer um, I have a uh, some Monero but that's you know I just have I don't know how many not not a lot it's a small bag of Monero I used to hold uh, XRP because I did tremendously well with XRP back in 2017 and 16 even um, it, it gave me a lot of profit I was trading it actively and I was just sleeping on it for you know for the next pump that pump is not looking like it's going to happen anytime soon so I've gotten rid of it and I kept a very small uh, less than a thousand dollars in XRP right now in order to see uh, when it uh, will recover because of course it's not going to always stay down uh, at some point they will do something they might move to a different jurisdiction from the US in order to protect you know their brand and everything but um, it, there will be a recovery of XRP so I'm keeping some to just sell a little bit higher instead of selling all of it at the bottom but uh, what else am I holding I'm holding um, some uh, stellar very little bit as well stellar and uh, that's pretty much my longer term uh, short term I'm right now I'm looking into KSM I just got some KSM EWT is on my radar um, I got some RSR reserve rights I got some um, I've got some uh, feta just you know because it is uh, doing the rounds right now and it's you know it's quite a hyped coin so of course but it, it is a good project don't get me wrong it's not hyped for no reason but you know the hype right now is pumping the price and that's why i'm keeping some i've even got some wi-fi um just because it's uh, at a good price right now according to bitcoin by the way uh, this year i'm mostly interested in how uh, coins are performing against bitcoin rather than against uh, usd tether or you know fiat value i'm not interested in what link or or theta or any of the other coins is doing in uh, fiat value i'm interested in what it's doing against bitcoin and because they've been dropping against bitcoin I feel that I was buying them at a time when you know when they were at a good low value against Bitcoin so they have room to grow against Bitcoin um, that's pretty much it right now I can't remember on top of my head what other coins I have but I do have a few more I usually trade around 15 to 20 coins on average but um, I don't tell I don't discuss all of these coins because some sometimes I would buy it and sell it within a week or within two weeks uh, you know just a, a quick swing so I'm not necessarily um, having the time to, to, to talk about them because if someone sees that video after two weeks and decides to go and buy the coin I've already sold it and uh, I don't want them to think that I'm promoting that coin uh, for a longer term people sometimes don't understand exactly what I'm doing and how I'm uh, you know why am I uh, talking about a certain coin they would watch the video a few weeks later the coin has already dumped and they would think oh why is he talking about this coin it's already dumped you know stuff like that anyway so yeah that's that's my answer to that question let's see the next one uh, do I think the US Treasury will consider all stable coins as security uh, no um, stable coins actually are not going to be considered as a security what the US Treasury is doing right now is um, trying to establish whether the ICO type of coins you know tokens and coins that were launched via an initial uh, public uh, initial coin offering or initial exchange offering whatever they did whether these are securities because they realize that people are buying these tokens with the expectation of making a profit and uh, after the ICO trend kind of subsided and throughout 2018 and 2019 we saw a lot of ICOs starting with a higher price than what the price eventually became when you know the token was launched on the market 
you know, a lot of tokens would be uh, sold at uh, 80 cents of a dollar, one dollar, sometimes even 150 as a, a initial uh, initial coin offering price. And uh, many people were actually buying these tokens with the expectation to make a profit. And the end, you know, at one you buy it at 150, it it launches on the market, everyone dumps, and uh, and it actually becomes uh, 20 cents or 30 cents or something like that. And um, you know, I'm, I'm talking uh, generally, of course, I'm not giving you a specific example here, but that's what happened a lot, and uh, that's why the SEC right now is um, doing this, trying to uh, basically impose new regulations and if they deem XRP as a security because they were launched through an ICO and because uh, they a lot of the founders uh, have huge huge stacks of XRP that they keep dumping on the market this is in fact the problem right now and um, but of course if they find XRP to be a security then a lot of the other coins that were uh, issued through an ICO will be also deemed securities and uh, that's why you also saw a lot of uh, ICOs for the last couple of years not being opened to um, US customers because they're already uh, they uh, the SEC already in 2018 uh, ruled that uh, if you run an ICO right now then you have to uh, be subjected to um, the, the laws and regulations that apply to a company that deals with securities. And uh, most of these uh, new projects, they're not registered as a company that uh, deals with securities, so they can't really run ICOs with uh, US customers. China is also in that list. Um, but they haven't actually said anything about the tokens and coins that were already launched by an ICO years ago. And now we are seeing that this is the case. So I don't think any stable coin will be a security because you're not buying a stable coin with the expectation to make a profit. In fact, stable coins are only alternatives to uh, fiat, to the US dollar or to other um, currencies because these some of these exchanges don't actually have the proper licensing to be um, offering trading pairs with fiat currencies. And that's why they need that digital alternative of a, of a fiat currency like the USD Tether or, uh, you know, many of the other alternatives, which are stable coins. I hope this answers your question. OK, um, the next question is about NWC coin. OK, let's have a look. I don't really know much about this coin. I went online here and I um, found it on coinmarketcap.com it's called news crypto and from what I'm seeing it is a coin that is supporting where is it is it this it's a news website it's called newscrypto.io best place to best place in the crypto world it's called for money making decisions um, okay the mission of New Crypto is to provide traders and investors with a set of highly profitable blockchain-based financial instruments. We provide the crypto community with powerful information and support, which allows them to receive and process trading signals several times more efficiently. Um, is, it, is it really needed? Maybe, maybe. I personally don't know much about it. I haven't heard anything about it from the people that I'm following or people that I know who are uh, in the crypto space for a long time. Typically, um, when something is hot, we hear about it very early on. Uh, I haven't really heard much about this one. So I assume it's, um, it's yet another token that someone created because they can. I'm not really sure whether it's a uh, uh, an important token and uh, whether it will have a good performance. We see that it already peaked here uh, in August and um, since then it's been retracing. So uh, it's losing value a lot in terms of Bitcoin value and that's, as I said, that's what I care about. The price in Bitcoin here is uh, in the orange. So um, it's dropping in Bitcoin price a lot. So is it a good investment? Probably not. I feel like 
why don't you just keep your money in Bitcoin? You don't really need. I mean, if you are looking to diversify and you have a lot of Bitcoin and you want to just have some money put in other coins, then um, maybe you want to allocate some in this one in case it, it surprises you and it does something tremendous. Uh, I also see that it's not on any of the top, top exchanges. Yes, it's on HitBTC. I don't like that exchange at all. It is on Qcoin. Okay, but on Qcoin you have tons of shit coins and uh, low cap coins that are not necessarily important or great. You can make profit with them, but it doesn't make it doesn't mean much. And that's about it. On the other hand, the fact that it's not on any of the big exchanges means that if it um, gets listed on any of the big exchanges, it will give you a huge profit. But you better go into their um, community somehow and uh, and start tracing, uh, keeping track on uh, what people are talking and what rumors are there. If you hear that it's rumored to be listed on a big exchange like Binance or Coinbase, I mean, I doubt. But, you know, any of the oh, will be like may, any of the more reputable and bigger exchanges, then you might want to jump in. But uh, just buying it right now and holding it in the hope that something would happen, that's like gambling. So I would actually wait until I have until I, I see something that w or, or hear about something happening that I know that something will happen. And only then I will jump into a coin like that. It, you don't need to be buying it right now that that's what i feel okay the next question is okay well these are quite a few questions let's go through them so cobovolt pro or apollo cosmos which is better honestly great to type in not use thumbs which is more safe in security wise internal employees and developers wise no malware no fail hack proof and reverse okay 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 uh, well, it's difficult to to uh, take sides here because I have uh, both. <laughs> I have both. I'm using both, and I like both. And uh, I've done reviews on both of these. Uh, okay, if we have to make it really simple, and we have to say which is the most secure, it has to be Copper Vault Pro because it's air gapped, meaning that you do not connect it to the internet or your computer. All of the other devices I have are connecting, are connecting to my computer or to my mobile phone via USB port or even with Ledger Nano X via Bluetooth. It's convenient, I like it. It's, it's very good for on the go actually because I can go with my Ledger, um, and via Bluetooth, I can use it with my phone so I can be anywhere. I can be, you know, on the street and still send money from my ledger rather than having to keep it on the mobile phone in some app. Um, you can't really do that with, I mean, you, you could do it with Cobo Vault Pro actually, because with Cobo Vault Pro, you don't have to connect it to your um, computer or phone or anything. You are sending, you will be accessing with, with an application in your phone and you will be scanning a code qr code in order to transmit the transaction to approve a transaction so you can use your cobo vault pro on the go without connecting it via bluetooth because bluetooth is a weak point bluetooth is something that can get hacked so in that respect cobo vault pro is still safer uh apollo hardware wallet has the latest secure element uh, so that is good. That is better than the Ledger Nano X, but it's still connecting with a USB cable and the USB connectivity is also a point, not necessarily point of failure, but I mean, if someone is really trying hard to hack you, they can do it, right? I don't really feel that this is a likely to, to happen. I mean, it's, yeah. To some people it might happen, but it's not something that happens every day, right? So if you are really uh, taking good care and you're protecting yourself and you're not exposing your devices and everything, then you should be okay. Uh, the Cobo Vault Pro is quite uh, big. Unfortunately, I should have taken it with me right now to, to show you. Uh, I, I knew this question was coming, of course, because I selected it, but I totally forgot I was going to have the three devices here to show you. Uh, in terms of size, the Cobo Vault Pro is uh, 
bigger than than this here so it is a bulky uh, device it, that's good on one hand because you can't lose it easily on the other hand for traveling is easy to be found and uh, i feel i feel the next the next question was something to do with traveling um yeah the third question here is uh, flights how do you fly on airplanes with these devices uh, you have to take it out of your briefcase or bag no i don't uh, actually i've never been asked to take them out of my briefcase or bag uh, you have one but you put it in the tray and then i guess it's the same as computers and worries no it's not uh, it is i would compare these devices to usb uh, sticks or hard drives nobody is asking you to put your hard drive at least i haven't been asked to put my hard drive in the tray only the actual device as a computer or a mobile phone is what i put in the tray to be scanned through the x-ray i don't put my hard drive i don't put my batteries i do, don't put my usb uh, in that regard if you're uh, concerned more about flying and traveling i would say go for the ledger nano x then because the ledger nano x is uh, about this size and uh, this is easily fitting in pockets and everything in uh, it's usually in my travel bag in my hand luggage and uh, and I've never had to take it out nobody's asked me you can even put it around your neck of course it, it's got metal so you can't go through the uh, machine uh, with this on your neck but uh, you can drop it in your pocket of your coat and then you can put the coat in the usually you put the coat in the tray and this is how it can get scanned without anyone asking you to specifically put it in and and it looks like a usb stick so in that respect in terms of travel maybe this is your best option ledger nano x but um ledger nano x as i said has a few points of failure and uh not failure but you know it can get hacked and um, it's most likely your computer can get hacked and then you know stuff can get messed about when you're sending transactions like uh, the wallet address that you're sending to that can get changed as you are sending the and that's happened already uh, in 2017 we reported on it i believe i think i reported on it many years ago anyway so yeah that that's uh, my not very short answer now um let me continue here with the questions uh lishin liu said that uh, we shouldn't be using usb but apollo cosmos uses usb to transmit to the computer yeah yeah exactly that's the thing so all of the devices that uh, i've reviewed apart from copper vault pro all of the other ones are using usb connectivity and uh, the ledger nano x is also using the bluetooth connectivity usb and bluetooth connectivity is uh, kind of a point of failure you can you can someone can actually hack this um it's not easy and it's not happening very often but it's possible so if the utmost security is your uh, biggest um, focus then copper vault pro is the one because everything is via qr codes so it cannot be compromised but it is not the easiest one to use with the qr codes and uh, you should watch my review and my step-by-step -step guide. I, I showed how to do a transaction and everything. So uh, decide whether it is the device for you. I personally don't use it on a daily basis, uh, but I use the Ledger Nano X pretty much on a daily basis, just because I've been using Ledger Nano X for Ledger Nano for four years now, and I'm so used to it that it's still my uh, number one device in terms of usability but um it's not the number one in terms of safety apparently obviously copper vault pro is safer and apollo hardware wallet now is got a most uh, you know the latest secure element so they they all have i mean there's not one there's no one device that is uh so much better than the, the rest each of them has its pros and cons this is what i'm saying okay and uh lastly can the airport authority or police take this? They can force people to open their phones. Have you had problems? I haven't had any problems like that. I've read reports uh, about a state. I forgot which one in America. Um, which state was it? 
I forgot now. Texas? No. Uh, find out. But there is one or two states in the US. Was it Washington? Anyway, um, have this kind of a new legislation or rule. I don't know what it is, a law where um, people are required to, um, when they arrive, they are required to declare if they are carrying cryptocurrencies with them. Meaning if you have your Ledger Nano S or another uh, wallet and you have cryptocurrencies in there, you have to declare that because it's considered to be very similar to just uh, carrying money with you. Because with uh, these wallets, they're not like a bank account. You might have a hundred thousand dollars in your bank account, but as you travel with your credit card or debit card or something, you're not holding all of this money with you. You know, if you want to withdraw it, you still can't withdraw it in one go uh, with the bank. It's, you know, it's not that easy. And the bank monitors, you know, the bank has anti-money laundering uh, um, procedures in place and everything. So if you're going to make a huge transaction, they're going to ask questions and stuff with crypto. Nobody's asking you questions and you can transfer a hundred thousand in an instant. So this is why they, um, they decided that everyone who's uh, carrying crypto around has to declare it. But it's not everywhere. It was one or two states. And I hope that this doesn't get widespread because... It is very inconvenient to have to having to declare all of your crypto as you travel around. So uh, careful when you travel, make sure that uh, you check these kind of things. And I haven't had any problems and I've traveled all around the world. So knock on wood. Anyway. Well, this is it, guys. Uh, this is everything for today's video. I don't want to take any more of your time. It is, again, a longer video. I wanted to make it short, but uh, yeah, this is it. So I managed to go through all of these questions. I will be doing uh, another Q&A with you guys very soon. Uh, so keep leaving questions in the comments below. And uh, also, if you haven't subscribed yet, if you just found this video and uh, this YouTube channel, well, that's great, but uh, hit the subscribe, hit the notification bell so you're notified when I'm posting a new video. Also, don't forget to find my last video from uh, last year. Two videos ago, basically, I announced a giveaway and um, you will find it linked right now here. So, And also in the description box, you will find the link to it and you can win 300 CBLT tokens, CBLT Cobalt Land. These are one of the sponsors of this channel and... Um, we are doing this giveaway next week i will be announcing the winners so make sure that you go and find that video and comment there just say win or whatever you want to say but include the the word win in there to qualify for the you know to enter this uh, giveaway and um, i will be picking a winner next week so stay tuned for that thanks for watching until the end if you like the video share it with someone else who will also benefit from watching it and now it's time for me to sign off i'm gonna see you in the next one